Welcome to The Drummer and the Great Mountain, a podcast where we share effective tips and practices for working with adults ADD, ADHD in a natural, effective way without the use of medications. Each episode, join me, your host, Batman Saram, along with the author of The Drummer and the Great Mountain, Michael Joseph Ferguson. Join Michael and myself in an interactive discussion of sharing our stories as we journey together in transforming what can be the gift of being what we call hunter types. This podcast is intended to be your audio companion to the book written by Michael, who joins me each episode where we both will strive to foster dialogue, give you our personal insights, and share both of our experiences on this similar path that we are all on. Our intention and hope is that along with the book, this podcast gives you an additional perspective as you listen to us delve deeper into each chapter of the book to give you even more tools to go along with what it is that you are reading. Visit us at drummerandthegreatmountain.com to purchase the book and look for more tools, tips, and updates, as well as giving us feedback on this podcast. Join our growing global community of creative types, entrepreneurs, and out-of-the-box thinkers on our shared journey. Welcome to the Drummer in the Great Mountain podcast. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. I'm your host, Michael Joseph Ferguson. How are you all doing? We are wrapping up 2023. And so for many of us, this was a great year. And for some of us, it was a really challenging year. And for most of us, it was probably somewhere in the middle. So taking time at the end of the year for reflection can really support our personal growth. It helps us get set up for a really good upcoming year. And As we talk about a lot on this podcast, if we celebrate our wins, if we stop and take a breath and go, here's what I accomplished, here's what worked, here's what was achieved, this supports our overall mental health, it inspires us, it keeps us going because we all have a tendency to stay stuck on the next thing and what I'm reacting to and this isn't working. So when we celebrate our wins, it supports us in feeling stronger, healthier, inspired, and it sometimes it takes a little effort, but... When we do it, we feel better and we get clear about what's working. And equally important is to name our challenges, to specifically say this is a challenge and noting the places where we can improve. This is also essential. They need to go together. You need both. So in this episode, we'll be working with a free PDF worksheet to do this really simple but really powerful end of year reflection. So to get the PDF, Uh, Click on the link in the description or just go to drummerinthegreatmountain.com forward slash episode 103, all lowercase, no space. And we will be continuing the money series in the new year. So part two will be all about how do we maximize our creativity, leaning on our creativity to increase our income, to create more prosperity and to start building systems that support us in the way that we're wired so that we can have prosperity both in the short term and in the long term. Okay, one quick announcement before we get into it. In January, we will be doing another life visioning workshop. We have done this every year since 2016. We used to do it within our Alive online workshops, and then we split that out last year into individual workshops. So it'll be uh, January 20th and January 27th, and we try to get a time that would work for most of you, so check it out. We do this every year. We get together as a community. We go through a life visioning exercise where we actually go through some worksheets and plan out our goals, what are we wanting to do for the upcoming year, and then in the second session, we really distill it down and say, okay, what's most important? Let's create some realistic milestones. Let's create some doable actions. We get to do it together as a team, and most of all, it's just really fun. A lot of people will call a friend or a family member in, and they'll do it together in different parts of the world, and they go through this exercise together and plan out their new year. It's super fun. I hope you can join us. Go to drummerinthegreatmountain.com forward slash workshop for more information or click the link in the description. All right, so let's get into our year end reflection exercise. Okay, so the only clear direction I want to give you in filling this out is 
use bullet points. Don't try to write long answers. See if you can distill it down to a couple words, just to just so you can cue that part of your memory of like, okay, that's that was a win. That was something that worked, or this is something that didn't work. Okay, so use bullet points. If you're having a hard time doing that, maybe flip the sheet over and journal a little bit, or open up your journal and then come back and see if you can just get to some simple bullet points on each of those questions. Okay, so let's start with question number one. In 2023, what were your wins and what worked? Okay, so let's take a step back and discuss what that means. So a win can be anything. It could be a goal that you achieved. It could be something that you felt really good about. It's something that worked. And maybe it was something that magically happened that you're like, wow, I can't believe that happened. The win category can be just about anything positive. So start with what are your wins? Maybe those are accomplished goals, things that you set out to do. Even even if you didn't put really conscious energy into it, if it still happened, it counts as a win. And it could be wins within your family as well. Maybe like your the win could be uh, your child won some award or your children are healthy. Maybe you it's, if you're having a hard time writing your wins, go into gratitudes. What are you grateful for? Those are clearly wins. Anything that's a gratitude is a win. So if you have, if you're like, God, it was just such a miserable year, you still had wins. See if you can, and if you can't think of a win, think of something you're grateful for. I just spoke to a client recently that said, I am so glad I'm still alive because of the things that happened to them during 2023. So take a moment and write what are your wins and what worked. So the second part of that is, what habits did you form? What did you know? What things did you shift either consciously or semi-consciously in 2023 that you've noticed has made a difference in your life? So if you listen to this podcast for a while, maybe you've integrated some of these things in. It may not be perfect, but you're like, oh, you know what? That's now working. I'm now exercising three times a week, or I've changed this thing in my diet and I'm feeling better. So for that first question, what are your wins? What worked? And if you need to think about what am I grateful for, what is going well, and to think back, you might want to start at January and start just playing back the year and going, okay, what happened in January? What happened in February? What happened in March? Uh, Skip around. There's no particular order. So why don't you hit pause, finish that first section, and then we'll come back. Okay, so before we continue take a breath and and celebrate those happened. That's going on. No matter how bad maybe your life is going right now, there were some good things that happened. There's always some good things that happen in our lives. And the more we focus on them, the more they expand. And they talk about this in the science of happiness, that this practice of savoring is so important for our mental health to sit back and go, ah, This is going well. Taking your time to really focus your consciousness on these things happened. This is going well. This happened. And you know what? I can do that again. So especially when you look at those wins, remind yourself, okay, that happened. There was some effort involved in many of those. And you can make that happen again. And even in a a more focused way going into 2024. Okay, so let's move on to question number two. Your challenges and what didn't work. So for many of us, this is super easy. We'll just be like, that's easy. I know all the stuff. So, okay, so that's great. So let's take a moment and let's just define what a challenge is. I specifically use that term for a reason. A challenge is not a loss. A challenge is something that you are challenged by, something that you're struggling with, something that you want to be different than what it is. Okay, so that's pretty self-explanatory. And also what, what didn't work? Like, okay, and especially look at your habits. What kind of habits or tendencies that you were practicing during 2023 that didn't, you didn't feel like it moved you forward? It maybe didn't support you. It didn't support the people around you. So let's make note of it with soft self-acceptance. We're not going to be harshly like, God, I just, I'm, this, is, this is terrible. And I just take a breath and just go, okay, let's just note it passively and just say, okay, that is one area of my life where I know I can improve. So take a moment and write out what were your challenges in 2023 and what didn't work? What, what are those 
parts of your life where you feel like that's this needs help this needs support this needs some energy so that the next year can go better so hit pause fill that out and then we'll come back okay and sometimes it's really helpful it can be cathartic to just write that out because sometimes these little gremlins these demons are like you know, they just take over our consciousness because we're not looking directly at them. And so they just kind of hover in the background, right? And so they get us in the middle of the night when we wake up in the middle of the night or when we wake up in the morning, we feel crappy. It's usually that stuff that's on that challenges what didn't work list, okay? So naming it is so important as well because then we can say, what do we want to do going into 24 that can potentially make a difference? Okay, so let's move on to question number three, which is, what am I committed to going into the new year? What am I committed to? What is it that I want to be doing? Where do I want to put my focus, my energy going into 2024? So what does this look like? This could be just about anything. It could be something like, um, I want my health to be better. I'm not feeling good. I feel like I'm kind of fuzzy and I'm not exercising and I feel blah. So maybe what you're committed to is committing to increasing your exercise on a daily basis in 2024. That could be what you write. Or you can maybe committed to a specific project that you really care about that you haven't put any energy towards lately. Maybe that's one of the things that you're committed to doing. Maybe when you look back and go, man, I did not spend really quality time with my children in 2023. I was so wrapped up in other things or I'm constantly on my phone and I'm sort of halfway present with them, but not fully present. So maybe one of your commitments is to be more present with your family, to not have your phone with you when you're engaging with your children. That's something that comes up a lot when I'm working with coaching clients. Maybe you haven't spent enough time fostering and supporting your creativity. Maybe there's some creative aspects of your life where they've just gotten totally gobbled up by just getting things done and, and handling all the commitments that you have. So maybe your focus in 2024 is to uh, go back to playing music again, or maybe it's to focus on your art, or maybe there's some specific thing, some specific uh, project, some creative project that you really want to accomplish in 2024. So whatever it is, take what you've written from the wins and the challenges, let those be uh, directors for you. May, let those set a direction for you and take a moment and write out some bullets of what are you committed to doing in 2024? How do you make 2024 even better than 2023? So hit pause and then we'll come back. So first off, if you did that, congratulations. Uh, that's awesome. Just doing that exercise drop some things into your subconscious. This has a an impact just by doing the exercise, just by going through that without even doing any actions, just taking that time does some magic. It drops some things into your subconscious. It gives you some clarity. And sometimes, especially as you go through the holidays, or maybe you're doing this right going into 2024, it's going to bubble up. You're going to be thinking about something else, and then you're going to come back to this exercise and go, oh, you know what? I could do this. It's going to start directing your steps in ways that maybe you you might not even see right now. And I've hear I've heard this from a lot of people that have gone through the our workshops and and gone through some of the exercises in the book, The Drummer and the Great Mountain. And they said, you know what? I did that exercise and I completely forgot about it. But then when I looked back at the year, I accomplished like half the things on the list. Uh, but they weren't even directing their energy specifically in that direction. So our subconscious is so powerful. And when we give it these exercises where we can sit down and consciously and with, without having a lot of extra details, just sitting down and going, okay, here are my wins, here are my challenges, here's the direction I want to move. Those three questions are so powerful. That's why they're such a key part of my coaching practice. So I hope that was helpful. What I want to encourage you to do moving forward is keep that sheet out with you. And if you can look at it 
every day or every couple days between now and the beginning of the year. So you can kind of get a sense of like, okay, this is the direction I want to move. Then you may want to go, okay, in the beginning of the new year, you might want to sit down and really spell out, here's the goals that I have going into the new year. So you can really say, here's my goal and here's some actions I can take to make that happen. And as important as, as doing all that is to find the support you need to make those happen. We can't, we're, we're communal animals. We need community. We should not exist on our own. We don't do well just doing things on our own willpower. We need support. So I want to encourage you to take those ideas, let them kind of roll around in your head for a little bit. And going into 2024, either with you can join us in the Life Visioning Workshop or you can just do it on your own. Spend some time really fleshing out that third section and ask yourself, how do I turn some of these into habits? What can I do so that my goal for this creative project is not just on my own willpower. I have scheduled sessions with other people. I've scheduled to, to, to join a group or I've done something that's going to really support that particular goal in happening. Otherwise, our willpower, especially when there's a lot going on, is not that strong. We only have so much will during the day. So we want to create a structure that supports the goals that we have so that they're not just solely dependent on our own willpower. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. I hope you're having a really good wrap up of your year. Again, if you'd like to join us going into 2024 to kick off the new year, join us with our life visioning workshop. Go to drummerinthegreatmountain.com forward slash workshop. And until next time, be well. Thanks for joining us. If you'd like to learn more about the book, The Drummer and the Great Mountain, visit drummerandthegreatmountain.com. To join us on social media, click the links at the top of the homepage. Help us spread the word. We're a small press and reviews really help. If you've been enjoying the podcast or the book, consider writing a review on iTunes, Amazon, Goodreads or your podcast app. If you're new to the podcast and want to quickly get up to speed on the concepts we discuss, check out our free five-day mini course. Visit drummerandthegreatmountain.com forward slash mini course. If there's a topic you'd like us to cover on future episodes, we'd love to hear from you. Please send us an email at info at drummerandthegreatmountain.com.